Hey guys, Mathel here once again, and as I just started a Frostblades character, for I want to test out the new th threshold drills, the new passives, and uh, whether or not Frostblades is viable as a endgame skill to kill everything possible, I also wanted to uh, go ahead and share with you probably um, my ideas of how you'd build Frostblades and the intricacies behind the skill, because it's kind of a clusterfuck and it's not too uh, obvious as to what you're supposed to do with it, or how it scales, or really anything about it. So to start with, when you first put it in you will notice if you attack with it and uh, there's nothing around then you're not going to get any projectiles um, you have to hit something for projectiles to then proc so that makes it a little bit clunky but multi strike fixes that up just a little frost blades itself consists of two parts an initial hit which is melee and then when you hit with that initial hit uh, projectiles splay out behind it currently seven additional projectiles and then you can use things like chain fork uh, pierce all that sort of shit on those projectiles which can be supported by support gems or other nifty shit like this weapon has additional chain all kinds of different stuff so you have two different portions to the skill there's a melee range or there's a melee portion and then there's a ranged portion uh, which is projectile damage and essentially you don't want to scale either one of those because if you scale the melee only the initial melee hit is going to do extra damage if you scale the projectile, only the additional projectile damage behind it is going to do damage. So you're only going to be getting 50% of the benefit either way. Currently, this is what it looks like with um, just, you know, chain, one additional chain at the moment, and uh, just the skill itself. So you hit, and then as you can see, behind it, uh, additional projectiles come out. So in the end, um, you will be scaling your projectile and your physical, ideally, at the same time with general attack damage and your projectiles do most of the clearing the melee sort of does the um single target damage so it ends up being a bit of a fight for what you need in your uh, build overall now apparently currently there is huge problems with the single target of the skill but the clear speed is really good which is why i've more or less made this character because uh clear speed should be fun but i want to tackle the single target as well and see how we can fix it now all the information about frost blades can be found in the uh wiki of course and it should basically go over everything I've said here, just uh, in sort of, you know, words and better detail. So it initially has a melee hit, and it's got cold attack and melee attached to it, and then a projectile, which is cold attack and projectile. And um, it works similar to lightning strike, kind of, because you don't want to scale one or the other, you want to scale both. Now, um, lightning strike's a bit different because you don't necessarily attack with it as much melee range so projectiles can be more scalable but for frost blades if you scale pure projectile you are going to shoot yourself in the foot for single target damage and i feel that may be where some people get uh, a bit trapped with frost blades and why their single target isn't as good as it should be but you know i'll find out in the next few days as well if it gets any better now this is all quite sort of plain to see and more visualized when you take the melee fizz support and the fizz prod support gems into account. Uh, initially frost blades, projectile attack, melee cold, it's got it all on there, right? The tooltip is at the moment 7.2k. You chuck in melee fizz support and you now have 9.9k. But the problem with that is only the physical, um, not the physical, the initial melee hit gets scaled there. Your Projectile damage doesn't get shown on the tooltip because it's only showing the initial hit and and melee physical doesn't scale the projectile hit at all uh, it only scales the initial hit then the projectiles get scaled by everything else or just projectile stuff so if you take that out and we have 7.2 and then you put in projectile damage fizz projectile damage the tooltip doesn't change at all because it's only scaling the projectile damage not the initial hit and the tooltip is based off of the initial hit so it gets kind of confusing um, long story short you want to use just general shit to scale frost blades like physical damage like elemental damage frost damage all that sort of shit uh, attack damage so that it applies to both things. Now, other things to note on there are 60% um, of physical converted to cold. That applies for both the initial hit and the uh, projectile as well. So in the end, that doesn't really matter because we're going to be scaling 100% uh, into cold damage and then through penetration. 
So that'll get me to the passive tree and how you more or less want to scale at the moment or what you're looking for when building frost blades. Currently, they have just then um, upgraded a few passives over here and the elemental ones down here and then moved the range ones over here. These are pretty important at this point. So these extra two passives then convert your remaining physical to cold and that makes um, your frost blades 100% cold damage. Now that's important because uh, it lets you scale a lot more damage with just elemental damage nodes, weapon elemental damage nodes, and most importantly, your cold penetration becomes far more powerful because all of your damage is cold at that point. So that means you can uh, use the cold pen gem and get full effectiveness out of it. You can get all the penetration from um, this guy over here, which is 5%, uh, penetration here as well, another 6%. I've chosen to build Pathfinder for this character, so that's another 10% penetration here. And uh, I think it's quite important to go as much penetration as possible because resistances are a big part of why uh, cold builds and most builds in general um, struggle in late game. So we also have potential to use the cold pen here, which is another 34% at the moment, let's say. And then our wise oak flask, which when we have um, cold resist as our absolute highest, which we always will, it's another 20% penetration. And lastly, the main reason that uh, Frostblade's getting a bit of hype at the moment is the fight for survival um, threshold jewel, where you can get two of them and you get 15% cold penetration um, for each one on the melee hit, which is important for our single target. So use two of them and you get 30% additional cold penetration. All in all, currently I have about 110% penetration, which is absolutely huge. It means nothing's ever going to have resistances against you, and quite often they will be in the negative, just giving you more multipliers of damage. So as far as the rest of the passive tree goes, um, the way I've built this one, don't take too much note of it because it's just a mock-up. It's supposed to be a Varanastra tree because um, Varanastra scales a lot of just general fizz nodes like these, um, you know, dagger ones over here, uh, the claw ones. So usually it's just fizz nodes. And then on top of that, we just scale crit. So crit, you know, doesn't care about whether it's melee or projectile. Crit's going to work for everything. So we have lots of crit here, lots of crit there, and uh, crit there and fizz it there and all that. So that's the idea behind that. But most importantly, we go for the elemental damage nodes over here, uh, the cold damage nodes, the elemental damage there, the cold over here as well for more penetration too. And we try and avoid just pure projectile damage because it only scales half of our skill. And we try and avoid melee damage because once again, only scales half of our skill. I'll uh, flesh this out in the next um, few days as I build this character. I'm not really sure Varinastra is worth it. Uh, quite potentially it'll just turn into a pure claw character or maybe a pure dagger or a pure uh, sword character depending on what we have. And so that brings me to the gear or the weapons you're going to be using. I will just mention right off the bat these things right here, Iwas, Iwas, Mirage, Antique Rapier, level 26, you get it pretty early on, you know, just at the end of Act 2 more or less or start of Act 3, and uh, they're amazing for leveling Frostblades. I've been using it up until about level 60, at which point I decided to get at least a Claw in for some more damage, but um, they have really good damage for Elemental, scaling your uh, added Cold Gem, for example, uh, really good attack speed. Most importantly, there's additional Chain when in main hand. So you dual wield these while uh, running around to start with, and you'll have an additional Chain when um, in main hand, and then you'll have an additional projectile when in offhand. So in total, you get one additional proj and additional chain, and it makes leveling a lot smoother. So chain itself is pretty important for the clear speed in Frostblades currently, uh, is what it seems like you want to do with the skill. So somewhere you've got to get some chain. It seems pretty... Um, important. And that's why this weapon over here, Touch of Anguish, is currently seeing a lot of play and use um, in builds, because skills chain an additional time while at maximum frenzy charges. So um, when you're at max frenzies, you're going to be getting an additional chain. That means you don't have to use chain in your setup. Um, but it's not the greatest weapon, otherwise your critical strikes do not always freeze, which means your freeze sucks a lot of the time with this. Um, it's not the fastest weapon in the world because it doesn't have any attack speed, and uh, it doesn't have huge damage, but it's got a good base. It's a really nice budget weapon, and it really does get a Frostblaze build started, but what I'm going to hope to do is use something like this guy, which is about 300 DPS, and... Um, more attack speed, a bit more crit, a bit more fizz, and uh, I'm going to try and use chain in my setup uh, for clearing most of the time, and then sub in faster attacks, for example, for single target, and uh, 
you know, see if that helps my uh, single target out because a weapon like this should be a lot better than a weapon like this or a Varanastra, for example, should end up having a lot more damage and with chain in my in, um, setup while mapping, it should be totally fine just to, uh, you know, clear with chain and single target should be fine in mapping with chain and then uh, using you know, faster attacks for single target, similar to something like what you'd use in most uh, area skills with an area gem and then subbing in conch effect when you want to do your big deeps. So that's about all I've got to say about Frostblades for now. I'll hopefully have more in the future um, as I level this character a bit more and spec him. But um, yeah, important to note, try and get general damage for Frostblades. Um, chain's pretty damn good for your clear. You really do want attack speed pretty much everywhere, or try and get a lot of it, because without attack speed, uh, the mandatory use of multi-strike ends up feeling pretty bad. So try and get um, attack speed going in your build, which is why I'm not entirely sure Varanastra is going to work. Uh, I don't have that much attack speed in my build, and they're pretty slow to start with. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, in the next few days. Thank you very much for watching, guys. hope this video has been helpful, and see you next time.